Welcome. Welcome to our inclusive VT conversation series, Making the Chair Fit. Thank you for joining this episode. Let us know on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube in the comments that you are joining in. This spring, the Office for Inclusion and Diversity began hosting two conversation series. One was hashtag VT Unfinished, and the other is Making the Chair Fit. Unfinished series focuses on unfinished conversations about identity, often on race. And Making the Chair Fit is about celebrating the incredible community that is Virginia Tech and how we are adjusting to new and continuing challenges in the world. And you can see our episodes for both conversation series on our Inclusive ET YouTube channel. Today's program is part of the Making the Chair Fit conversation series. Making the Chair Fit is a metaphor for how we are helping others to be able to make a difference in the world. It's about our motto, Uprosum, that I may serve, and there's never been a more critical time for service than now. Our last episode, we had the pleasure of hosting Matt Brandon and Latanya Walker as they introduced our new diversity and inclusion alumni engagement initiative, the Inclusive ET Difference. The Inclusive ET Difference builds upon Inclusive ET, which is our institutional and individual commitment to our motto, Uprosum, that I may serve, and the spirit of community, diversity, and excellence. The Inclusive ET Difference is the commitment to creating a more just and inclusive world starting at Virginia Tech. It's an opportunity for our friends and alumni to continue to make a difference at Virginia Tech. One of the really wonderful opportunities for me in my role at Virginia Tech is meeting incredible alumni. And today I'm excited because I feel like I'm getting an opportunity to celebrate and showcase amazing talent that is part of Hokie Nation. So today's conversation is with incredible leaders who exemplify Uprosum and are making a tremendous difference and giving back in significant and transformational ways. So I'm excited to get started. Because this series is making the chair fit, we often start by talking about our favorite chair. And so I'm going to ask each of you to briefly introduce yourself, share your key point of connection and engagement with Virginia Tech as an alum and your favorite chair and why. And so we're gonna start with Greta Harris. Thank you, Minna. Um, I am Greta Harris and during my day job, I have the pleasure of serving as the president of the Better Housing Coalition, which is an affordable housing developer and owner in central Virginia. I graduated from the College of Architecture and Urban Studies in 1983. And I am a current donor. I am a planned giving donor and I just started my fifth year on the Board of Visitors. And my favorite chair is one that I inherited from my great grandparents. Uh, it's a little creaky um, and it's a King's Clawfoot chair that I restored. And it just keeps me grounded and connected to my ancestors. Oh, I love that. I love that. What an awesome story. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, Desiree. Hi everyone, I am Desiree Creighton Barney. I am a graduate of the uh, uh, school, the College of Liberal Arts and Human Sciences. I have a degree in communications and I have a 20 plus year background um, career in human resources. I serve the university in the capacity of being the president of the Virginia Tech Alumni Association Board of Directors. Uh, and my favorite chair is one that's in my living room, and it has become my favorite during this, um, these COVID times. I, my living room was, is not a place that I normally spend a lot of time pre-COVID, but since COVID, I've learned to appreciate going in there, appreciate, appreciating the silence. And so my chair sits by my window, and I really enjoy sometimes just sitting in there and, and being. So that's my favorite chair. Sitting and being. <laughs> yeah. I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Dwight, what about you? So hello, everybody. It's an honor to be with everyone today. Um, my, my, um, my experience at Virginia Tech, I was there five years. I graduated in May 99 with um, two degrees, one in sociology and one in family child development. Um, upon graduating, I moved on after I had a brief period with the Baltimore Ravens in their mini camp. I went on to 
play arena football, and then went on to coaching, um, went back to Virginia Tech and coached, and then went on to get my graduate degrees, um, a master's in human services and a master's in managed family therapy, then later on became a licensed therapist. I now have my own practice called Victory Life LLC, where we do mentoring, high school internship, program groups, and outpatient therapy, individual and family therapy. Um, and then we have, I'm a founder and owner also of Victory Life Youth Sports, which is my 501c3, which works with student athletes here in the DMV, Washington, DC, Northern Virginia area. My favorite chair used to be a stool. <laughs> Rashad and Andre Davis know about that, a stool from Virginia Tech. When you play, you had a stool in front of your locker, um, but with old age and weight gain, uh, don't sit on it anymore. <laughs> so I have a black chair, that's my favorite chair in my living room that everybody in my family knows that that's my seat when I'm sitting home after a long day of working. So um, I wish I had the legacy of having that stool again, but it's been a long time since I sat on that stool. So it's now my black chair in my living room. Okay, another living room story. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Andre. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, like Dwight said, it is an honor to be here with uh, Black Excellence. Um, and so I'm, I'm really blessed to be here with you guys. Um, I am a graduate, a uh, 2001 graduate. My major was Housing, Interior Design, and Resource Management. Um, and now I am currently the Virginia Tech Director um, of Student Athlete Support and Community Engagement in the Athletic Department. Uh, I'm also a member of the Campaign Steering Committee for Virginia Tech. Um, uh, I also am on the board of two faith-based organizations, one being Pro Athletes Outreach, which exists to, um, to unite pro athletes and couples to grow as disciples of Jesus, as well as positively impact their spheres of influence, um, as well as Africa New Life Ministries, which is based in Rwanda. And we exist to transform lives and communities while preaching uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and acts of compassion. Um, my favorite chair is a little bit different from everyone else's. It's a more public chair. Um, and I really miss it a lot. It, it was the theater reclined chairs that would have the uh, tray and the cup holder where you could sit back, enjoy a great movie and be entertained. And I really would enjoy that because uh, it would always be that chance for you to uh, kind of escape, uh, be entertained, but then also be around uh, others. So that social aspect of being able to be quiet, enjoy the movie and um, uh, just enjoy the moment. So that's my favorite chair. Oh, I missed the movie theater. <laughs> you had to go there. Oh! <laughs> Thank you for that reminder. Yes, the movie theater. Uh, maybe sometimes not so quiet sitting next to others, but yes, I <laughs> appreciate that. All right, Rashad, what about you? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so again, thank you for having me and being a part of this uh, amazing forum. Uh, my name is Rashad Jenkins. I'm also a 2001 graduate, uh, similar to Andre Davis from the degree of uh, Housing Interior Design and Resource Management. I believe now they've changed that title um, to real estate, uh, which is what I do in profession presently. I'm located in the Washington DC market. Uh, I'm a commercial real estate broker. I'm also the supervisory real estate specialist on behalf of the District of Columbia, which basically handles about six to 8 million square feet of commercial of leased and owned real estate that's owned by the district. So I actually run that entire portfolio in that regard. Uh, and so, you know, obviously, is my connection to Virginia Tech. I'm also a part of the uh, Black Alumni Reunion Planning Committee. Uh, this will be my, I think, fourth year uh, in association with that. And uh, again, my, my favorite chair, honestly, is the, it's the current chair. It's not as regal as some of the other things that have been mentioned, but it's still my favorite chair. And that's the chair that's in my home office. And it, it's more so about the surroundings of that chair. So behind me are my ancestors. They're, they're my grandparents, my great grandparents. Um, pictures from my both my wife and I and our respective families and so I sit in front of that and that why that chair is so important is because as I work on my day-to-day -day initiatives I know that they're looking upon me and taking that uh, that torch and moving it forward so that is my place of tranquility when I'm gives me purpose it also gives me hope when I'm moving forward in my in my career and personal endeavors 
I appreciate that reference to the ancestors. We've got a couple of those today. So, so thank you for sharing that. And, and Tracy. Absolutely. So good afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. Um, it's such a pleasure. Um, it's really an honor, I think, to just share this platform with, with so many friends. Um, so first and foremost, again, I'm Tracy DeShazer. Professionally, I serve as the Deputy Secretary of the Commonwealth of Virginia. It's a role I've had the pleasure of serving in for two governors now, both Governor McAuliffe as well as Governor Northam. Our office does a little bit of, of everything on behalf of the Commonwealth, but probably most near and dear to my heart, we have the opportunity to really give individuals that have been system involved second chances, um, first and foremost. And then we also have the opportunity to directly connect the community to government resources and services. And so just two components of my job, again, that are near and dear to me. For the university, my, my other job, I like to say, um, I serve in a few different capacities. So I am a member of the Virginia Tech Alumni Association, National Board of Directors. I chair the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. Um, I am also one of the co-chairs for the Black Alumni Reunion. Um, I started my, my service with Virginia Tech actually with the DC Hokies, and so I'm never going to miss an opportunity to, to, to make a, give a nod to the DC Hokies and was very excited uh, to hear of their, their recent work around diversity and inclusion. Um, my favorite chair uh, is actually the chair that I am sitting in right now. Um, again, in my professional capacity, capacity I don't take it lightly, uh, the opportunity in front of me. And so to sit here in my work chair um, is something special. And, and I make it a point to, um, to have a few things around me, right? And so I have a, uh, an image on my wall that marks a historic civil rights um, uh, march and movement in Danville, Virginia, my hometown. I have some letters to my right, but out of respect for Desiree, I made sure they were out of camera sight, but they are pink and green and they happen to say AKA. <laughs> and then of course I have my Virginia Tech degree, which you all can see on the wall behind me, but this chair is incredibly special because in this role, I really consider myself a connector, a convener and a collaborator. And anytime I get the opportunity to bring together the work that I do with Virginia Tech, with my sorority, with my community, um, it's just a special place for me to be and for me to sit. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I love what you just said, connect, convene, and collaborate. And I think that's so much of the work that all of you um, uh, do. And so each of you has shared your favorite chair, but really almost Tracy, as you were saying, you we're, each of you is serving in key chairs, key roles, so to speak, in your professional careers, but also on behalf of Virginia Tech. And I'd like you to ask if you could just share your reason for deciding to share um, to serve in a, in a key role here at, at Virginia Tech. And so Desiree, we'll start with you. What, what, why, why did you choose to serve in this role as, as president of the Alumni Association Board of Directors? Um, well, first of all, it was an honor to be elected. And you know, I have to put, um, I have to say this, um, I am the first African-American in the history, African-American female in the history of the university to serve in this capacity. So it's a position um, that I don't take lightly. I am very, very honored. And sometimes I still have to pinch myself and, and say, okay, I'm really president of over 260,000 people, uh, living alumni. I serve, um, I tell people, um, I get people sometimes ask me, do you work for Virginia Tech? And I say, I work for Virginia Tech, but I'm not employed by Virginia Tech. Um, that, that The board of directors is only one um, of the things that I do for tech. And I, I, I serve um, the university because I feel like it's my duty. Um, I have some really good memories from tech and some not so good memories from tech, but I, I believe, and I could be biased, I believe that Virginia Tech is the, the finest higher educational institution on the planet. And like I said, I'm probably a little biased, but you know how we are, the member, members of the Hokie Nation, we, you know how we are. Um, and there's something special about tech. So I feel like it's my duty to give back and to serve the, the, uh, the, the university in any capacity. And as I always tell people, I never say no to Virginia Tech. They, whatever they have, no matter what tech has asked me to do, whether it's speak or, what, or help plan a black alumni reunion, whatever, I always, always say yes. It's an honor and a privilege to, to serve and to work for the university. Thank you. I'm going to give you a moment now. Go on and shout out Delta, because I know that that's your, you know, there's two things that <laughs> equally weigh. You've got your quick moment now. But shout it out. 
And yes, I do, other than Virginia Tech, I do serve my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, and I, Greta's over there too. So yeah, Greta's my sorority sister. So yes, I do love, I have much respect for um, Alpha Kappa Alpha, as you know, especially on January 20th, 2021. So I let me give them um, their props, but yes. I, but thank you, man. I appreciate that for giving Delta equal time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Andre, you're you're a uh, member of the campaign steering committee. Can you just share a little bit about what your reason was for deciding to serve in that really important role for the institution? Yeah, uh, honestly, it was for me to learn more about the university. I, I think for many people, especially being a student athlete, um, my whole experience at Virginia Tech seemed to be in a bubble. Um, everything had to be about football, had to be about sports. Like I, I knew the athletic department, like the back of my hand and where all the offices were, where study hall was, all of those things. And so um, a lot of our experience was kept away from the general population um, at large. And so it, it really kept me away from all of the great things that the university has done and is currently doing. And so for me to have the honor to, uh, uh, to be asked to be on the campaign steering committee, uh, one, I thought it was very special because I don't know how often they um, ask uh, former student athletes to be a part of these boards. Um, I, I see the town halls, I see the different meetings that go on. And it's, of course, uh, just a list of great people who have done great things from the school, but not many of them are uh, former student athletes. And so for me, I wanted to kind of complete that picture. Um, I already had a great experience at Virginia Tech. And as Desiree said, I love talking about it to anybody. Anytime I see that VT anywhere, I'm going to say go Hokies or, or something just to let them know because I, I truly enjoyed my experience. But in being a part of the campaign steering committee, it's allowed me to see really how uh, minuscule and how small the athletic department is in the grand scheme of all of the great things that Virginia Tech is doing. So uh, for me, it gives me a great opportunity to learn more about the great things we're doing and it allows me to be a, a better advocate as I talk about the university as a whole. Thank you, thank you. And Tracy, your chairwoman of the Alumni Association Board of Directors Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And can you share a little bit, and I know you've worked for many years supporting the Black Alumni Reunion as well, and currently are as well. Can you share a little bit about your decision serving that, those roles? Absolutely. I think um, for me, it was never a question, right? I mean, I, I think back to my very first time tech, stepping foot on Virginia Tech's campus. Um, I believe I was in the 11th or the 12th grade in high school. And I remember visiting and everywhere I saw students serving, right? That's the thing that stood out to me. Not only did they have on Virginia Tech gear, so I thought it was a requirement to wear orange and maroon. Um, later, I found out that's just who we are as a university. That's the pride that we have in our university. But I saw Hokie ambassadors, right, giving tours and walking backwards around campus. I saw members of the, you know, the Corps of Cadets walking around campus and, and leading. And I saw, you know, other student leaders. And so for me, I knew that if I had the opportunity to be a part of this thing, this thing called Virginia Tech, that it was never going to be a question that I was going to do everything within my power to give back and really live out that model of eProsum. Thank you, thank you. And Greta, you're a member of the Board of Visitors, so you're part of our institutional governance structure. Can you share a little bit about that role that you're serving in? Uh, sure, um, so like everyone else that's spoken, I love my experience while I was at Virginia Tech, uh, five years in the College of Architecture, and it was really hard but I still enjoyed it because it helped to build skills. Uh, it gave me networks. And most importantly, it helped with my confidence to go out and pursue my career goals. And so even though I started out as an architect, I shifted gears um, almost 30 years ago now, unbelievably, and, and moved into the nonprofit community and economic development arena. And I have been able to work in some of the most impoverished communities all across the country, helping to lift up those communities and tease out the talents um, of, of folks and, and to believe in them that they can do great things. And 
honestly, I had disconnected from the university for almost 20 years. And, and someone reached out to me, they got me hooked again, and I was all in. Um, and what I wanted was to ensure that the kids that live in the communities that I develop um, felt welcomed in Blacksburg and that the university would see the talents and gifts that every human being has and will tease them out and, and welcome them and help them to be their best selves. Um, I was a little bit disturbed um, initially when I got re-engaged that the statistics around diversity at the university were honestly about the same as when I was there back in, 19, um, in the early 1980s. And so I was determined to try to move to a governing uh, leadership position because um, you don't do a whole lot on the Board of Visitors except you hire the president, you help shape the direction of the university and you approve the budget. And I wanted to be on a governing, um, within the governing leadership to be able to ensure that there were direct pathways for kids who look like all of us to be welcomed at Virginia Tech and to be able to be their best selves. Thank you. I have, I have benefited in terms of my role from the tremendous support of the board um, for diversity and inclusion. And I think your role and membership along with others has, has really been transformational for the institution. So thank you for just agreeing to serve in that capacity. Um, Athletics. I know Andre thought it was his whole world, but <laughs> it's still a big world at Virginia Tech. So it's it's a key strength for us. And um, I was just so privileged to have an unfinished conversation with Whit Babcock, who's the director of athletics. Um, and and that, um, that was an unfinished conversation and that aired last week, um, a few weeks ago, actually. And so we talked about sport and race and the intersection challenges and opportunities um, that are currently part of our national dialogue. And, and I, it was a transformative conversation for me in terms of learning more about our director of athletics, how he thinks, his background experience, and his leadership of over 500 student athletes. And so I wanna ask our, our student athletes just to share a little bit about the value of being a student athlete and how, you, how that experience here at Virginia Tech prepared you for the world. So we'll, we'll start with you, Rashai. Can you just share a little bit about what you took away from being a student athlete that still impacts you today? Sure. So um, I, I played on the Virginia Tech football team. I was also a dual sport athlete at Virginia Tech. I also was a part of the Virginia Tech's track and field team. Uh, and out of that, you don't realize that in a young age, but you're kind of thrust into an incredible level of responsibility. Uh, and that's the responsibility to lead. Um, and then in conjunction with that, I know all my, my Deltas and my AKs are on this call. I'm also a member of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, and I also pledged there. So I come from a very unique perspective, um, being able to, and going back to being able to have that incredible role of responsibility to the community. Uh, and I think that oftentimes when you look at athletes, uh, that they are of the focal point in a lot of arenas as it relates to the minorities at Virginia Tech's campus. Uh, and then to add to that, being able to be thrust into my organization fraternally and being involved in the community and leading from that aspect. So in totality, as I carry that through into my posts and going into the real world, I think that now it's, it's innate and upon me to be involved and to be a voice and, and understand that that responsibility that I once had still continues today, albeit through a different forum or a different platform. Um, from those that know me very affectionately by my nickname, uh, Ra Ra, I've done a lot of entertainment and marketing as well that was bridging a gap and became a focal point in order to bring, you know, a lot of our uh, both undergraduate and postgraduate bodies together. Uh, and I've been able to travel the world, been around with several artists. And so it, that kind of prepared me by being a student athlete to handle those pressures, because what, what athletes rarely get credit for is the amount of responsibility that is thrust upon them from an academic point of view, from an athletic point of view, and from a spiritual and physical point of view. And I definitely want to bring that full circle of how often do you hear athletes that are bodies are broken and battered and bruised, but yet they're out there every single day to put their best foot forward. So all of that's just a mental growth um, that uh, we were able to attain, at least I did, um, being uh, at Virginia Tech and cultivating those relationships as I carry through into uh, into post my post college uh, career. 
Well, I mean, being a triple, a double athlete, but also pledging is, is extraordinary. And so, I mean, the amount of discipline that I'm sure that you gathered as part of your journey here has, has continued to support the success that you, you, you've had. So thank you for sharing that. Um, you. Dwight, what about you? How, what, 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 ha, what did you take away from being a student athlete and how has it shaped who, who you are today? I took so much away. And, uh, I, and by the way, I remember when Rashad was pledging, I thought he was going to die. <laughs> And, Most uh, people who pledge think they're going to die. <laughs> and Corey Moore, my teammates, I remember. Um, but he uh, persevered and he's, he's doing great things. You know, um, Virginia Tech, being a student athlete, you know, Andre Davis mentioned the bubble we live in. Uh, for me, uh, coming from the Tywood area, the 757, growing up in Newport News and Hampton, it was a bit of a change. I was heavily recruited, but, you know, I chose Tech over East Carolina, UVA, Florida, Notre Dame, a lot of big universities, including some HBCUs, my parents are part of HBCUs, Hampton University and Norfolk State, but I chose to go to a different path. I was the first person from my high school in 94 to commit to Tech. The last person was in 1985. So I stepped out on faith to go to a different path where in that region of Virginia where I was growing up in, HBCUs were heavily influenced. You know, at that time, a different world was really big. A lot of people, it was the highest enrollment in college. Many people in my generation were the first people to go to college. So you know, there were a few people who didn't really think I should go to tech. When I went there, I was privileged to meet some great people from all across the world. And, you know, I was, I took it upon myself not to just be a football player. I think it was cool the fact that I got two degrees and the fact that I was able to interact with people who could care less about sports, even though Hokie Nation has a very passionate fan base. And the coaches I had and the, the teammates and the guys before me that led and even my friends that were in, in, in the sororities and fraternities, there was a sense of family and community there where we just had each other's back. It, it was like a, a HBCU within campus. And, you know, you had the parties on campus and, you know, you had the different step shows and you had Overton, you had all the stuff at Dietrich. You had just a great camaraderie and there was an energy those five years I was at Tech. And then I found myself, um, I got more and more confident and the things and life lessons I learned in leadership then really propelled me to do what I'm doing now as a business owner, two business owner businesses. And Virginia Tech um, invited me back in 2013. I was a keynote speaker for the 9-11 Memorial Day of Service. Um, then I got invited that same year to be a broadcaster. I was the color analyst for the Virginia Tech spring game. And then a few years later, I met Tracy. I was actually, I forgot to mention in the introduction, I was on the Black Alumni Board. So it's almost like things came full circle and I saw the fruits of my labor planning at Virginia Tech during those times in the 90s came back and it was it's pretty cool to be able to say I graduated from that university coming from Hampton and Newport News where no matter whether you're from Richmond or from Cincinnati a lot of people don't make it out and I just take pride in the fact that now when I get on social media when I go to events that Ra Ra and I do together you see so many people at the Metro, you see people in DC, you see people at restaurants and they have that, that Virginia Tech logo on and they, you discuss what years you went there and you reminisce and there's a, a nostalgic feeling around that. And playing football was just part of my journey. Um, I played in some great games and had some great memories, never lost to Miami. We split against UVA, but it was almost like that was just part of it because I've met so many people who were not athletes and who loved the football team or you know, they were on other sports teams. And like I mentioned, the sororities and the fraternity. So my, my five years there were great. It just, it really helped me become a young man and, and grow into the person I'm in today. Thank you. Thank you. Andre, being a student athlete, what did it do for you? How did it help you be the person you are today? Yeah, uh, one of the statements that I've learned lately and I use a lot is that life moves at the speed of relationship. And the one thing that I've really been able to learn was when you're a part of a sports team, that, that is truly your family. Um, the things that you go through is, is quite amazing. And it, it lends itself to draw you that much closer together when you're going through uh, the blood, sweat and tears of the process. And uh, both of the men that you see on this call are uh, very important pieces uh, to my life. Um, both Rashad and I, came in at the same time. And really, if you were to look at our, uh, on paper, we are almost exact that we were both two sport athletes. We both did football and track. We were both in the same major. Um, I don't think 
for either of us, that was the major we started either. <laughs> so we switched there. Um, Dwight is instrumental um, as a brother to me as well, because uh, a lot of people don't know this and this story will be saved for another time. But Dwight is one of the main reasons why I continued to play football, which ended up being a great decision for me. Um, so um, I, I appreciate um, the way he was able to take me under his wing um, uh, because of his relationship with a, uh, my, my cousin who is no longer with us, but he was able to look out for me as a uh, young incoming freshman and just keep my mind on the right track and, and motivate me uh, to move forward. And uh, that all kind of moves to, you know, we've talked about uh, adaptability. We, we talked about how you have to persevere. Um, but one thing I really want people to understand is that, you know, failure is uh, a key uh, sign or a catalyst to the strength that we all have as well. And I think when you're a part of a football team and you have to earn your keep, um, you have to learn to sometimes embrace failure and, and say that I, I am not going to stay here. I've got to get back up and I've got to move forward. And so oftentimes it's in the midst of those failures that you realize um, that you have the strength to be able to move on. When you have your brother who's next to you, who's feeling the same way, but when you see them get back up, that causes you to get back up. And so for me, that has been a, a catalyst of strength um, to allow me to take more risks um, in the things that I'm doing in life, uh, the opportunities that I have that sometimes even if I don't have all of the um, resources necessary to complete the task, um, to be able to go in, understand the different gifts that I've been given and just the opportunity to go out there is to go at it full blown and whatever I don't know, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to learn and be better for it in the future because where I'm at right now, I would have never been able to tell you I would have made it here if I didn't take some of those risks. So I embrace the failure knowing that it's gonna make me stronger later on down the line. Well, that concept of failure, we don't talk about it enough because it's painful to really talk about failure, but it does lift us. It does help us fortify ourselves for you know continuing to persevere and, and, and to learn lessons. And so thank you for, for sharing that. Um, I think this issue of being gifts and having understanding that we've been given gifts and that we need to maximize our impact with them. I think, Tracy, I think about you and your role. I mean, it's such an incredible position that you have um, to influence the Commonwealth of, of Virginia in so many ways. But I know one way that is particularly important to you is diversity and inclusion. And I just wonder if you could just talk a little bit about how you see sort of diversity and inclusion um, generally? Yes, yeah, so I really appreciate that question. Um, interestingly enough, uh, before I knew what diversity and inclusion even was, right, what this phrase or this term meant, Virginia Tech gave me my first experience and, and opportunity, um, you know, in the space. I mentioned earlier that I, that I served on the board for the, for the DC Hokies, and so I chaired their diversity and inclusion committee, and it really came about because um, I recognized that a lot of my friends, we were getting together, right? I looked around, looked to my left, to my right, all these friends were Hokies. Right. So is there an opportunity for us to, to take this to the university, to take this to the alumni chapter and say, hey, we get together on a regular basis. Can we make this a formal program? Right. And that's really how I got my start um, in the space of diversity and inclusion, in the, in, in the space of really understanding the power of diversity and inclusion. Um, I think that, um, you know, from then, my work really allowed me to. Uh, inform a few things professionally. Virginia actually recently brought on uh, the Commonwealth and the nation's first ever cabinet level chief diversity and inclusion officer. Um, I had the opportunity to work behind the scenes and, and really leading that effort to bring on our first, um, again, chief diversity officer. And again, it's because I got that start through Virginia Tech. Now, I think a lot of people think about diversity and inclusion as these two separate things, right? And, and either or, uh, but actually it's an and. Right, I think that when we prioritize diversity, it really gives us the opportunity to ensure representation. I think that we, when we prioritize inclusion, it really gives us the opportunity to ensure you know, a sense of belonging, right? And then I think those two things, when we bring them together, diversity with inclusion, 
I think that's when we really, you know, become our best selves, right? We can have the potential to become our, our best university. Um, I always, you know, when we talk about diversity and inclusion, a lot of people immediately go to race, but it's so much more. There are so many, you know, dimensions of diversity, right? So whether that is geographic diversity, right? We have Hokies near and far. Right. I think it's important to, to, to acknowledge them and to figure out ways that we can continue to stay connected to those Hokies. Um, when we think about, you know, these various dimensions of diversity, we have Hokies that are differently able. Right. Are we a university that's accessible Are you know, is our alumni programming accessible? Right. And so I think that, again, it's not an, an either or. I really do think that it's, it's truly an and. And I think that each of those things working together really can get us to a better place in ensuring equity overall. Well, I appreciate you mentioning the range of diversity, I think, because the issue of race and African-American experience is so dominant in our conversation at the moment, we often fail to recognize the breadth of diversity. I mean, for example, today is the Transgender Day of Remembrance, and we, you know, there will be a program on our campus to just recognize and celebrate, and we did an um, a program on accessibility and, and disability. And so it, it's, the, it's the range of human identities is, is really what diversity is. And I think that um, that's why I'm excited about the inclusive VT difference because the, the goal is to make a more just and inclusive world starting at Virginia Tech. And so each of you has committed in some way to supporting this concept of the inclusive VT difference. And I'd like to just go around um, and, and hear from each of you wh why that concept resonates with you. And so Desiree, we'll start with you. Um, the concept resonates with me because um, when I got to tech, there were not a lot of people who looked like me. Although my freshman, inner and freshman class, we had 760 African-American students and at the time, um, freshmen, and at the time that was the largest incoming freshman class we, um, of, of African-American students that had entered tech. So there were not a lot of students that looked like me and I feel a sense of an obligation to um, continue to support the, the university's efforts in recruiting Underrepresented, underrepresented and minority students, I feel a sense of obligation to assist those students in any way I can. I feel that we all as alumni have a sense of duty and obligation to help them um, because we all know that there are somebody's shoulders um, that we're standing on and we need to, to recognize that and we need to give back. This is not my, I am not the originator of this quote, but I live by the motto that we need to lift as we climb. And so I'm, I'm very passionate about that. And um, I do in, enjoy interacting with students um, whenever I get a chance uh, to, when I'm on campus, I like to, um, pre-COVID, I like to try to interact with students and, and hear about them, listen, hear what their concerns are, listen to their stories. Um, during COVID, I've had the opportunity to, to participate in some activities or observe through Zoom. And unfortunately, I'm finding some of the conversations are not much different than we were having 35 years ago. So um, I, I would like to be and continue to try to be a part of the effort to change their narrative. So theirs may be a little different than ours. So lifting as we climb, I think that's the model for the National Association of Colored Women. I thought that that was maybe their motto. Um, but I, I, as well as Omega Sci-Fi. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all need to lift as we climb. You know, it's, it's, it's really what <laughs> PROSIM is in many ways. It's, it's giving back. Um, thank you for, for sharing that, Desiree. Greta, what, what about you? What does, why, why the inclusive, how, how does the inclusive ET difference resonate for you? Well, I think we all know that we have a rich and complex history in this country and in Virginia. Um, and as we're getting close to celebrating our 150th anniversary at the university, the first hundred years, none of us on this Zoom call would have been able to attend for a host of different reasons. And in, in 2020, uh, which has been a year for the record books, it's somewhat pulled back the curtains on some of the remaining disparities that go on across our society. Um, but you can still feel the passion that each of us has, our, our love and connection to the university. 
And over the years, uh, in the time that I was there, we've had dynamic individuals who were charged with recruitment of diverse students. Um, I just remember Calvin Jamison and Glenn Valentine that were just spectacular. Um, and, and they both recruited me to the university. But they were dynamic individuals without uh, infrastructure. And so what I think has occurred over the last few years with Inclusive VT is that we're building out an infrastructure of inclusivity that is changing the culture of the university. And then uh, while you may lead the effort and orchestrate it, it's not all, all on your shoulders. Um, and I believe the board has certainly embraced this as a priority. Uh, President Sands has embraced it as a priority. And now it, the tentacles of this goal are uh, throughout every aspect of the university, every college, every department, students are embracing it and we're changing the culture. And Virginia Tech is a big institution, a big undertaking. And so it's, it's gonna take some time, but I am so proud of the progress that we've made thus far and the, the changes um, in our faculty, staff and student body. Uh, we have a ways to go still, but the inclusive VT structure will help us uh, in ensuring that our culture will always be welcoming as we go forward. I appreciate that. I mean, the focus of Inclusive ET is the sustainable institutional transformation. You know, how do we make it permanent and, and part of the culture? So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, Rashad, what about you? Why, why the Inclusive ET difference? What does, why does it resonate for you? Uh, as she, as Greta eloquently placed it, uh, just being a part of that infrastructure in, from a ground roots perspective, I think that when you talk to a lot of young people, I'm in the DC market, I grew up in the DC market, and you, you find that there's not a lot of familiarity um, with the subcultures um, that are in Virginia Tech. And, and that's a big thing. And, and it's also knowing that I touch the community in such a positive force that the, I use the word, I want to use the, the term trust, right? And the trust is, is that, you know, by listening to these examples of all of us that are, uh, that are here on this forum, to see that there is a pathway forward, that there is a familiarity, that there is a culture that we're trying to impact um, onto the landscape of what Virginia Tech looked like as a whole, just as the way our society looks like as a whole. It's a very diverse uh, platform of people from all different cultures, all different races. Uh, and so that does exist in Virginia Tech. And a lot of people don't know that. Uh, and specifically, you know, the, the minorities that we are that look like brown, brown and, and black people. Uh, and so I think that this effort was was is necessary and that for me to just sit on the sidelines and complain or lack thereof, or, in, instead of being involved in utilizing my voice, my platform um, to reach out to the, the, the massive amounts of people that I can and to inform them that you can get a higher education, you can have a cultural experience and you can do that within the confines of Virginia Tech, I think is what's most important to me. Thank you. Andre, what about you? Yeah, like Rashad said, you gotta get off the sidelines. You gotta get, you gotta get in the game, and uh, you know, for all of us, I, I think a lot, a lot of people always, they don't give themselves the benefit uh, to to know that they have a sphere of influence. You have an opportunity to make an impact um, with you know the gifts that you have and and the knowledge that you've received. Um, I was recently, I think it was one of the Virginia Tech town halls recently um, when they were talking about the innovation campus. And I want to say it was Lance Collins, who is the uh, innovation campus VP and executive director. He had a quote, uh, I believe he said, diversity is the keystone of innovation. Um, and, and that to me was important. So, you know, to me, inclusivity is kind of at the core of helping our university to be able to reach its potential. Um, it's going to provide opportunities for, for students um, from as many diverse backgrounds as possible, as we had just talked about, not just for us um, uh, that are brown and black, but from as many different backgrounds from all over the country, from all sorts of different cultural backgrounds, um, to have a voice and a platform through Virginia Tech um, to share their experiences with communities and their respective careers all around the world. And I think um, if we can 
continue to understand that and continue to embrace that, that, um, that the more diverse we are, uh, I think the better ideas and examples that we're gonna have and, and strengthen us as we move forward. I, I agree that that's sort of one of the key qualities of diversity. It makes everything better. Everything is better. So um, Dwight, what about you, your thoughts? Well, like Desiree said, when she came to Virginia Tech, they were the largest incoming freshman class as far as black students are concerned. In 94, it was the same way for my class. We were the largest incoming freshman class. And I think when I think about inclusion, it's personal for me because I talked about how I was the first graduate from a high school to earn an athletic scholarship in 94 that chose Tech since 1985. Well, there was a domino effect. I met my wife there, so she went to Virginia Tech. We all know about Mike and Marcus, Marcus, Vic, and Mike. My, by the way, I'm the first Vic, keep that on record. And then you have my other cousin, Octavia Green, who just had a feature with VT Marketing. She's an attorney practicing law in Miami, Florida. That's my cousin. And you have my cousin now who's there, Califio Vic, who's on the tennis team. So that's seven family members that were able to go to Virginia Tech and create, create their legacy. Mm. And I think inclusion is recognizing the passing that torch on and letting the new incoming freshmen, the new the, the students around the state, around the Commonwealth and, and even in the DMV and throughout the country that as a young African-American, you can find a future and create a journey at Virginia Tech, a path for yourself. And to let people know we are so much more than Bruce Smith and Hoda on the Today Show. We have so many more people. I mean, look at this group, Desiree, look at Tracy, look at Greta. We have so many people who are principals and educators. Uh, Dr. Melendez Berg, who's working as a professor at Norfolk State of Virginia Tech grad. We have so many people who came, you know, before me and after me who are doing great things throughout the country, entrepreneurs, actors, you know, people who own barbershops. We have to make sure that the future understands that they can find a home at Virginia Tech and have that same journey and not be afraid to come from those communities that may say, hey, you know, you need to stay closer to home because in my five years there, I mean, it taught me so much, the relationships I've built and the things I've been able to do because I stepped and went to a place that was different from where I came from. We have to let them know that they're gonna be safe, that they're gonna be supportive and, and, and promote the people on this, this call and the people that are gonna be on the future um, programs, inclusive VT to show, look at these amazing people. I mentioned all my family members who all had a great career, not just athletically, but culturally at Virginia Tech. Um, I talked about my time there. And even though I was a football player, played in front of thousands of people and played on TV, but at the same time, there were so many things on campus during my time that were great, the Overton Step Show and, and how big that was. People came from all over the country to watch that step show at Virginia Tech. That was must-see stepping, <laughs> okay? And then you had space tournaments and cookouts and block parties. And that needs to be promoted because that's culture that we pride ourselves in that is diverse, but different, but also fun. So I just want to make sure that the inclusion includes embracing the differences. And my last point is that universities all across the country, the successful ones know how to evolve. When I speak of my time in the nineties, it was my time. You know, for this new generation, it's a different time. Social media is part of it. So the university must involve and embrace differences and which includes kids from different communities so they feel comfortable when they step into a campus and it's, it's time for their journey and their path. You're right, you're absolutely right. Um, and then Tracy, your thoughts. So thank you. I think I, I'm gonna answer that question in a, in, and share my thoughts in a few different ways. Um, first, I just think back to you know my first year on that campus, right on Virginia Tech's campus, and I had two um, very memorable experiences. I remember one being in the Corps of Cadets, right? And I remember we went to our first morning formation. I looked to my left, I looked to my right, I looked across that upper quad, and I saw very few people that looked like me, right? In fact, I was the only one in my company at that time. And just that sense of, you know, what am I going to do, right? Um, and really looking for someone, anyone that looked like me, someone that I can turn to to go through this experience with, right? My, my mom actually um, dropped out of high school. And my dad, unfortunately, he attended that other school. Um, we're not gonna mention that school, but he did attend that other school, but unfortunately he didn't have the opportunity to graduate. And so, so kind of bringing that weight and, and having that weight on my shoulders. And then I remember going to my first class in McBride 100 
And again, looking to my left and looking to my right and literally only seeing one other Black student in that room of, you know, more than 600, um, you know, seats. And so those two experiences, you know, were, were just, you know, lasting experiences. But then I remember a third experience. And that was when I walked through Squires to the Student Center and I saw the Black Cultural Center, right? And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm Black and I'm going in here because I feel like this is my place and I can find my people, right? And so all of those experiences um, were a part of my, you know, my freshman year and my overall experience at the university. But I'm so glad um, that I push through that, push through those challenges. And so when I think about inclusive VT difference, I think about ensuring that other students don't have to have those same, um, you know, that same discomfort, right? Ensuring that other students, you know, as they come along, they know that there are other Black students there, right? There, there is a place for you. There are cultural centers where you can feel a sense of belonging, um, you know, and not just in the student center, you should feel that sense of belonging whenever you're moving about throughout the entire campus. Um, something else that I think about when I think about inclusive ET differences, really connecting all of these dynamic um, initiatives and programs and giving opportunities. Um, Dr. Pratt Clark, I have to take a moment and really acknowledge the work that you've been able to do. I am so appreciative of, of your presence, your, your position, your power. Um, and appreciative to have a board of directors and a university president that understands the importance um, of diversity and inclusion. And then the last thing that I'll say is that when I think about inclusive VT difference, for me, it's really about leveraging our position um, and our power for a collective purpose, right? So how can we come together um, and again, really ensure that Virginia Tech is a place where everyone feels this sense of belonging. Thank you. We're just gonna follow up with you and, and then just go back up. Um, can you, for the Hokie family, the Hokie that's that's watching and learning more, can you share just a little bit about how you think that they can personally get involved to make a difference? Grace, we'll start with you. We'll just let you sort of continue. Absolutely. I mean, I think one of the best ways that people can get involved is by engaging with their alumni chapters. Um, there are so many chapters uh, of, throughout the country that people can connect with, and really there's something for everyone. And so if you are interested in, um, you know, focusing on, you know, entrepreneurship or, or business development or creating job opportunities for Hokies, then I promise you there's an opportunity for you. I know that both the D.C. Hokies as well as um, the RVA or the Richmond Hokies, they both host job fairs. Right. So there's an opportunity. Um, if you are interested in in uh, in football, right, we all love some football. Um, and so if you're interested in putting together, you know, football viewing parties, then again, there's an opportunity for you. And so one of the best things that you can do is really just connect to your local chapter, either on social media or you can just shoot a message, you know, to anyone at the university. And I guarantee you that someone will work to get you connected. And I also encourage you to just visit the Virginia Tech Alumni Association um, website as well to connect to those chapters. And while you're there, you may want to go ahead and update your contact information as well so that the university can stay connected to you. Thank you so much, Tracy. Yeah, alumni chapters, just that's a small way of just getting connected and, and plugged in again. Thank you. Dwight, how can, how, what, what advice would you share for folks who want to get involved? Tracy had a great answer. And Andre mentioned this earlier. I think for, you know, alumni specifically, um, it's just, just get connected. Um, I know I have been instrumental in Rara Rashad and I really just doing a lot of a lot of events in the DC area. Some of those have been my birthday parties, but at the same time, just really sharing um, some of the success and also events occurring in your in your region where you can attend, not just around the sporting events, but if there's something going on with its trainings or workshops. I know um, when Desiree was named um, uh, was the president, correct? I shared the post throughout Facebook because, you know, I thought that was a major accomplishment. I just think it's just more so about getting connected and coming back once this COVID uh, virus is contained and we have the green lights and move about and travel. I think just it starts with just visiting your university, remembering what was important as far as that journey for you and also getting involved in some way. If it's not sports, if it's academics, um, if you don't, you can't make it, you have some money, donate your funds because, you know, money is something that all universities need but um, find a way to get connected. Um, when you see, especially with social media, when you see those things that come in the mail, the events, the, the memos, uh, the postcards, or there's an event going on, 
and it's in Falls Church or if it's in Richmond or if it's in the Hampton Roads Tidewater region and you have a moment, you know, come out and support it. That's a university. And I think also, um, you know, share your story. I know, um, Dr. Clark, you're working on that um, as we're doing today, but, you know, share your story with young people coming up. I work religiously and diligently with students in the DMV, Northern Virginia specifically, and throughout the Commonwealth, high school students. And I talk about my journey and what Virginia Tech did for me and also some of the programs they have now and even other events occurring. My daughter, Dr. Clark, my oldest daughter, she participated in the, um, again, I'm showing my age, the, the program that you hosted. The Black College Institute. Yeah, I know it was virtual this year, but she, she thought it was really great. So sharing that kind of stuff, I found out about that from my wife who someone shared with us. So just get connected. Get connected, great. Rashad, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, just to echo what was already said, I think that being an ambassador to this inclusive could be anybody. Uh, I think that uh, the one advantage of social media is the awareness of information that can be spread across, you know, vast areas in, in, in splits, you know, in split seconds. So, you know, if you're involved in that may not be as formal as just saying, you know, re repost a message from from a chapter or an alumni group that you're part in, because it's six degrees of separation. You don't know who's seeing that and who may need to be looking for a resource that yeah, you may not know personally, but between those efforts, you know, you're touching that person. Um, uh, LinkedIn, I know that uh, right now in Facebook, you know, there's several groups. I'm a part of like eight or 10 of them. Uh, uh, in which, uh, from my entertainment background, as, as Dwight mentioned, and some of the things that we've done on a social basis, but there's, there's something for everybody. And I just want to encourage that, you know, if you want to see a change, if you want to see uh, a more inclusive experience that you have partaken in and would like to see more of that, then just get involved. I, I think it's as very simple as a, as a right click, you know, um, in, in this day and age. And I think that that's very important. And don't belittle that your voice. I think that just as much as we put out the word about voting and the importance of everyone's voice being heard, it's the same breath in the same vein. We're talking about changing the the the, the platform, the the look, the feel uh, of Virginia Tech. Uh, and you are valuable. You don't have to be the stellar athlete. You don't have to be. You know, everyone has a role to play, and it's all valuable. Everyone has a role to play. It's all valuable. Thank you, Desiree. Your thoughts. Um, one of the things I'm passionate about is mentorship. So I would encourage as many people as possible to get um, in contact. If you are interested, um, Latanya's probably going to kill me, but um, contact Latanya Walker. We have the, Ho the Hokie Mentorship Contact Program. One of Dr. Sands' initiatives is to for all students to have a mentor. And um, you would be surprised to know what you can lend to a student, um, especially those who look like us. You have years of personal knowledge, professional knowledge, and they need that. Um, and so I would encourage everyone to get in contact and become a mentor to somebody. It's not something that's time consuming. It doesn't take a lot of time, but it can make a world of difference. Um, also, I'm gonna put the plug in because I serve on the um, steering committee with Andre for our Boundless Impact um, Initiative. If you, we believe in um, giving times, talents, and treasures. So if you're able to donate financially and support the, the university financially, please do so. I know we have giving day coming up in a, next, in a few weeks, in a few days. Um, and no, no amount is too small or too large. So I encourage you um, both to give both your time and your treasures and your talent. Time, treasure, talent. <laughs> absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Greta, your thoughts? So Virginia Tech is not your grandfather's Virginia Tech. Um, I am blown away every time I'm on campus and I see building expansions. I hear uh, from students and faculty the amazing work, uh, just groundbreaking work that we're involved in around the world. We are a global land grant university. And one of the best ways to just be aware of all the things that are going on are, is to get involved. And uh, one of the most fun things to do is to come back for one of the class reunions. And there are lots of planning committees all over the country where you can plug in. And when you actually have the chance to come back on campus at a reunion, you see some friends as the years and even decades have gone by, people may be a little rounder or there may be less hair and all of this but the passion for the university, 
um, th their enthusiasm for the university um, is still strong. You will be inspired. Uh, you will um, want to get more involved. And as others have said, we encourage you to, to share your time, talent, and treasure. Um, as big changes are going on at the university, it's important for us to be at the table and not only help shape uh, the culture that we know is important morally and from a point of relevancy for our future as a university, um, but we also have to put our resources in. Um, and that gives us more uh, opportunity to help shape the future of Virginia Tech. Thank you. And Andre, the final word. You got the final word, Andre. <laughs> Oh, yes. This is what I want you guys all to remember. It takes finances to get these things done. Um, there are so many times, and Rashad touched on it earlier, is that you, so many people want to complain about what we don't have at Virginia Tech or what you don't have somewhere, but no one's willing to put their time, talents, and treasures behind it to actually see it move forward. Not only have we had our time there, but we have an opportunity to give to this next generation. And um, as Desiree said, it can be any amount. Um, you know, I think a lot of times when we talk about giving back to the university, you you see the people's names on the building and think that you have to be that person. And no, that's not the case. Now, if you have the means to do so, we would highly encourage you to, to give to the university, to give to the inclusive VT difference and the, the programs that we now have. Um, there is now an infrastructure. For many of us um, here on this call, there was not an infrastructure for us to know exactly where our funds would be going to. So I would highly rep uh, recommend that you go to our website, the inclusive.vt.edu website, to be able to see the programs and the priority areas that Dr. Brett Clark and the department is, is going after to be able to help this next generation. Um, and just take the time to be able to give back and give to this next generation because this is truly a legacy that we'll all be able to look back on if you give now and be able to see uh, things come to fruition at a later time as we move forward. So um, we thank you guys for being on this call and, and thank you for uh, just considering the ability to be able to give back with your time, talents and treasure. I think that wraps it up. So it's a, it's a wonderful theme we heard at the end in terms of time, talent, and treasure. And I want to really just thank each of the alumni for joining us today. I, I really just treasure being part of the Hokie Nation and just being part of this amazing community. And as Andre said, I would encourage those of you who are watching today to visit our website, um, inclusive.vt.edu. And you'll see a link on that page that says, learn about the Inclusive VT difference. And so it's an opportunity to take some time to see the work that we're doing around representational diversity, building cultural competency for the entire institution and preparing students to be of service at any time to anyone, anywhere. And it's that broad service mission that Inclusive ET embraces. And so we ask you to think about joining the Inclusive ET Difference Facebook page so you can stay up to date on this new initiative and to continue to think about small impacts. And one of the beauties of the role that I play working with students, faculty and staff is I have been able to see the difference that small amounts make. And so when we're thinking about the graduation rates and in our strategic plan, we have an ambitious four year graduation rate for students, three years for, for transfers. But when I think about why some students don't graduate, it's often because they don't have enough money. And it's not because they don't have $10,000. Sometimes they just don't have $300 for rent or maybe $1,000 for a tuition, or maybe they don't have books. And so the Inclusive VT Excellence Fund helps to support both the recruitment and the retention of our talented students. And when we started this work many years ago, we were just thinking about 2022 and you know, sort of five years away and can folks give $20 and 22 cents a month? I mean, that's, we were just breaking it down into a little bit of money just to, but when you think about maybe 2000 alums giving that small amount of money, you start to have a pool of resources that can be transformational for an institution. And so we're, we're just asking, you know, our alumni Hokie Nation to think about how, how in some ways can you continue to financially support, whether it's that amount of money or it's a larger amount. 
But we're also thinking about ways to continue to honor Janie and William Hogue. And so they were the black family that housed the first black students when they enrolled here on campus. The first black student, Irving Pedro, I just had the pleasure of interviewing him and that episode will come out in, um, on December 9th. So please, please look for that. And he shares his experience with that family. Um, but we were able to rename a residence hall in, in their honor. And one of the students who live with that family has started an endowment. Um, Lindsay Cherry has, is working with a community of other alums to build an endowment to support the room and board for students who will be living in that residence hall. And so if you're interested in giving to that particular effort, again, you can find out about more about that on the Inclusive ET Difference page. And so I just wanna thank all of you for joining us. There's no place in these tough times that I would rather be than at Virginia Tech and part of the Hokie Nation. So please join me in thanking our amazing alumni leaders. Thank you.